Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. My name is editor Martin Creamer. Joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Sashni. Can you talk to us about the potential for platinum to become a $35 billion a year industry? And we're talking dollars here. So if we had to convert it into rands, it would be huge. At the moment, it's an 11 billion rand a year industry. But because the world is changing so fast, everybody is not only grabbing onto gold, but they're grabbing onto a new climate change sort of regime. And at the center of that is hydrogen. And at the center of hydrogen is platinum. And at the center of platinum is South Africa. And we've got this enormous opportunity. And what was said yesterday at the Platinum Group Metals Industry Day was that we should seize this opportunity because Minerals Council South Africa has already drawn up this plan. They've seen this a long time ago, but it's now unfolding at a rapid rate. You see Germany with you know, hydrogen and fuel cells on their lips every few minutes. The same is in California. Korea just doesn't want to hear about anything else. It just wants to go the hydrogen route. It's not interested in having batteries in cars or anything else. It feels that if we go full log on hydrogen, we'll have all the benefits. It'll float all the boats because it can also give you heating. It can give you cooling. It can give you power generation. There's nothing it can't give you. It can give you storage and it can give you a clean air. The only emission is water. So people are dashing into this. I mean, if you look at the pace of the webinars going on at the moment around the world on hydrogen, fuel cells and the green economy, you just can't keep pace. You know, countries that weren't even looking at it are now intent on doing it, either as a supplier or as a user. So I think that the remark made by Minerals Council South Africa yesterday that they need a partner and that partner must be government so that they can both go into the world and show everybody the magic of platinum group metals and get people sold on this whole idea of clean air in the world which we're getting used to going through COVID and market it because they say you know to actually create the market faster is going to do so much for South Africa it'll create a hundred year industry and it needs to be worked on right now. Yeah, because there is massive talk about the need for South Africa to promote the hydrogen economy. This was again, you know, speakers yesterday at the Platinum Group Metals Industry um, virtual webinar were really just saying over and over again that it must be South Africa's number one priority. And I was very glad to hear those words come out of the mouth of Steve Peary who is the CEO of Royal Baffer King Platinum. And that's a black controlled, black run, black managed, black owned platinum operation. So he's saying this should be our number one priority. The government should be joining hands with us very, very firmly. And so should the development banks, the IDC and the Development Bank of South Africa and every other development bank that gets interested in this. So they should be joining. They should be having roadshows around the world and they should see it as the number one priority because the benefits are so huge for South Africa. Not only do you have that mining benefit, but you have the knock on of jobs. You have the knock on of supplies to the mines. You have job creation everywhere you look. And at the same time, you're doing the right thing. And you must bring it into South Africa as well. You must have cars here that are hydrogen driven. You must be able to go to your petrol pump and at least be able to fill up with hydrogen as we used to do with Sassel in the old days. You know, we used to have all the competing um, petrol companies on the forecourt of the petrol stations, but there always had to be at least one Sassel pump where you could go and buy South African. You could get a local product. And so that they want to do with hydrogen. And the beauty of the hydrogen is that the technology has changed to the point where it will no longer be a gas as you use it, but it will be in liquid form thanks to German technology. And those particular tanks and everything you use in a filling station and in petrol holding places can be converted 
for hydrogen. So when you're storing that hydrogen, you're actually storing electricity, because when it gets into your car, you turn it into electricity through the fuel cell with the help of platinum group metals. You're also storing you know, heat. You, you're storing so much power that you can convert into molecules, you can create uh, ammonia, you can do all sorts of things with this product. So that is why the world is going for it. You can see that Tesla has moved very fast and you know the battery operated car has been the catalyst for this and people are quickly going into that because some of them want the convenience of just plugging in rather than going to a petrol station. But if you look overall, you know, the infrastructure that you create for hydrogen can be used by trucks, it can be used by buses, it can be used by trains, uh, you know, it can be used soon by planes, they're really talking about it. So it crosses such a wide variety crosses all the sectors of industry that it will eventually then feed back to the ordinary car and you can see places like Korea they're just making you know hydrogen fuel cell cars they, they're not concentrating on the battery uh, electric vehicle that is a slightly a disadvantage in that you can't do the same distances the battery is quite heavy but I think in the short term they'll just go parallel, they'll go flying through and maybe one day they'll decide well we've got enough infrastructure for hydrogen to go the whole route but the spectrum that the hydrogen economy gives you is so wide that we should be going into it as a number one priority as Steve Peary said at the Platinum Group Metals Day and Steve Peary is not only the CEO of Royal Bafokeng Platinum but he's also vice President of Minerals Council South Africa. And along with hydrogen, you've mentioned um, the potentially large prize for South Africa lies in the significant fuel cell growth. And that the day before. So you had the Platinum Group Metals Industry Day on the Wednesday. On the Tuesday, you had Nedbank, which is a green bank. Its color is green. So it wants to get involved in everything that's green. So like it did last year in Cape Town, it held a virtual conference on this whole idea of hydrogen fuel cells and the green economy and they brought in Professor Dr. David Hart from Switzerland and he was just saying to South Africa the prize for South Africa can be great you know if you seize this opportunity and he was looking also and encouraging people to come up as Nedbank was with how South Africa can play the role other than just being a supplier of platinum group metals. You know, what other role can it play? And of course, Isondo came up with the sweet spot in manufacturing where you develop components for the fuel cell. You don't go making the fuel cell at that. That's going to be a first world uh, venture. But if you want to get involved in that, make components that go into that fuel cell and then also be ready to export those so be in an export zone that's that's convenient because you will not be assembling them here they will be going into fuel cells around the world but there's a nice opportunity we can have here with our weak rand to manufacture if we close to the airport and tax incentivized plus we've got access to the platinum group metals you know we can really export these rapidly so that even if someone in Germany is making a fuel cell, he can get our components the next day. So <clears throat> this is the thinking now that we initially go in the manufacturing front into a sweet spot and into niches that will be component orientated, but they're already talking what the big world talks, that you then look to the recycling of whatever you make particularly these um, membrane electrodes that uh, assemblies that they're talking about and that you know once passivated these come back to South Africa for the recycling opportunity and you close that loop that the world is demanding now they don't want waste they don't want rubbish lying, lying around the place so you need to have a circular plan and so they are already thinking along those lines that you do something that maybe Johannesburg International Airport you then get these back once they spent elements you recycle them and that becomes part of the business and it becomes part of the value added side 
of the hydrogen fuel cell and the green economy. Thanks for speaking with us, Mohsen. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.